Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Triple Jump podcast. It's not an athletics podcast. No, it's not. It's a video game podcast, and this week, it's a Christmassy video game podcast. It is, and it's also, I mean, it's a video game video podcast, sort of. In right. The, there's a video version of it available. Yes. And if you're watching that, mm-hmm. you might notice that our, our scenery is fractionally different to what it usually is. Yeah, we're recording downstairs, sort of in the worst games ever setup, which means there's a green screen behind us. Now, I hear you all asking fervently, mm. what fun things can we expect from the green screen? Absolutely nothing. nothing. In fact, there's the usual foam tiles we have, but they've just been green screened in. Oh, okay. That's, that's what you get. That's what you get if you're watching the video version. My name is Ben. My name is Peter. Peter. Mm. It's nearly crimbles. It is. Look at the hats, you can tell. Look at the hats. Have we won the hats in a podcast video hats. before? I don't, I don't think know. in the podcast, no. I don't know that we have. This is the last podcast that we're doing this year. Mm. We'll talk more at the end about when you can expect us back, but we'll be taking a couple of weeks off. Yeah. Before we go any further, though, can't wait. Yeah, it's t- <laughs> before we go. Don't get too excited. Bef- <laughs> I'm never coming. I'm. I quit. Thank God. Yeah. Break from these people. <laughs> Speaking of these people, mm. do you want to know who is bringing us the show this week? Advert, advert wise. I hope you're talking to the audience, not me, because I do know. Yeah, I know. I, d- I sort of addressed you. I was gonna. I was thinking, what's the logic that I pretend I am talking to you, Peter? Yeah. Would you like to know who is provide? Who is advertising on the podcast this week? Uh, yeah, I would. I. Good. There's your oh, ad read. Oh, I see. Thanks, thanks, Ben, for that ad read. You're there. welcome. There you go. Your turn. Okay, now I will read the You're ad read it. that you've given to me. Yes. Um, you know um, those places that you can go to where it's like a big field and you can actually pick your own like strawberries or like I think they've got pumpkin ones in Amarisa. Sure. Uh, and then yeah. you sort of pay for it on the way out. Right. It's like a sort of harvest your own croppage. Uh huh. Um. Uh, there's 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 a new one that's just opened up. Is there? But instead of um, harvesting vegetables or fruits, you actually harvest your own little Santa costume. <gasps> okay. So it grows on a little Santa costume plant, mm. and this sort of red material sort of grows off it in, right. the, in this sort of large furrowed area. Yeah. Um, come on down this holiday season to the Christmas red field. Oh, there it is. Do you see what? Do you understand yeah, that no, one? No, I get it. Or for short, the the Chris Christmas field. The Christmas field. That's it. Yeah, the Christmas Fantastic. field. Fantastic. So you can go down there. Yeah, to Chris Redfield. To Chris Redfield. Yeah. Are there any um, any any undead to speak of, or is it purely a Christmas enterprise? Uh, well, when you when you pick when you harvest the stuff from the plants, they sort of moan and scream in a oh, sort of horrible way. Okay, it's not like a it's not like a joyous moan. Not like they're having no, a nice no. time. Not like they get some kind, some kind of gratification out of you pl- no, no. plucking them. Well, and actually, when when the material grows on these plants, it's actually just white. Um, but as you pick it, it goes red. Um, right. Sort of, it sort of coagulates and uh, sort of smells quite strongly of like iron. It's a bit scary. Isn't yeah, it? it's not very it's nice. It's like scary. a Halloween Christmas. Well, thankfully, we're all safe because it's a lie. Oh, thank God for that. You. Christmas idiot! It's like waking from a nightmare. You are getting stupid coal in your silly stockings because you fell hook, line, and sinker for it yet again hook. every single time. Hook, line, and stinker. That's, Hick, what, you that's what you are. You're the <laughs> hook, line, stinkers. Yeah. The uh, the the real reason we're able to do this podcast every week is that uh, is is because of the Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash Team Triple Jump. The very kind patrons over there are the sole reason that we do this podcast every week. In fact, if you donate one dollar or more to us via Patreon, 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 you can ask a question on the podcast. Okay. I'm also very, very aware. If you listen carefully, yeah. Peter, do you hear that buzzing noise? I do. Yeah. I'm now wonder. I think it's coming from one of the lights. Mm. This, is, as we're recording in a different setup, I'm wondering what kind of fun audio issues we're going to have. Well, we just had a little bit of creak, a sort of a early of taster. Yeah. Like a demo. They're going to go for a smoke at some point, and mm-hmm. it's going to... Here comes the circus. It's back in town. Crunch, crunch, crunch. That buzzing light is a new thing, because it was in the current episode of Worst Games Ever that I'm editing, but has is never it? been... And you address it. You're like, I think that light is buzzing. And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, That's I've, probably... I've edited around it. It's probably fine. Apologies if mm-hmm. you're listening to the podcast, and it's really annoying. I'll do what I can in the mm-hmm. edit. But, the, you know, it's we're, we're two days... It's Thursday. Everybody's going home tomorrow night. Yeah, let's just have a bit of a Christmas. Blitz spirit, for God's sake. So, just, 
Calm down. We're all piling in. Everyone's got 10,000 things they need to record because it's all been left to the last minute because, of course, it has. Yeah. And so we're in a different place recording this week. And so we're just going to have to put up with the weird buzzing noises. Creaking smokers. The creaky sneakers. <laughs> yeah. The sneaky creakers. They're not sneakers at all. No, they're not. Creaky stompers. <laughs> So if we can all just get along, that'd be great. Peter, yeah. I have put it to the audience that we wanted Christmas-themed questions this week. Yeah. So what that ultimately means, really, is that this podcast is now the Christmas Anecdote Cast. Excellent. Because it's just, no one wants our opinions on things. Nobody's, <laughs> a few people asked about industry happenings, and I was like, nah, I'm going to talk about Christmas 1997 yeah. for me. And you're going to listen to it. Enjoy and, it. And that's that. Kick us off, Peter. Okay, question one here comes from Trevor Price. It's a good, strong name, that. Trevor Price. That's Trevor Price. Yeah. Dim, dim. Hi, Ben and Peter. Every Christmas as a child, I used to ask for a random game I knew nothing about and take my chances, mm. even ignoring the reviews. Are there any times you have done this? Keep up the good work and have a sandwich, it says. I... A nice dry turkey sandwich, maybe. I won't. Oh, okay. I won't have a sandwich. Right. Will you? Yeah, I will, I think. What kind of sandwich are you going to have? I'll have a dry turkey sandwich after on sort of You're boxing day. You're not going to put mayonnaise in I will. Okay. I mean, the turkey will be dry. The sandwich right. won't be. But yeah. yeah. Wet. I'm going to just yeah. give a, put it under the tap for dink a second. It, dink it. I'm going to dunk it in the <laughs> washing up basin. Get some suds on it. Delicious. Mm. Have you ever done that before? Have you ever asked for just... I, I can't say I've ever made a habit of it, but I've certainly at some point just said, oh, that looks interesting. I'll get that, not knowing anything about it. Well, it's funny, actually. One of the best gaming-related... Well, one of the best games I've ever received at Christmas. Mm -hmm. I was going to say gaming-related presents I've had, but I've had actual consoles, which are sort of right. better than game games. <laughs> uh, yeah. One of the best games I've ever received for Christmas was one that I didn't actually ask someone to get me a random game, but I just uh, received a game from someone that I wasn't expecting to get, and uh, I didn't even know that this thing was out. So it was in uh, sort of... Early noughties, it will have been, I don't know exactly what year it was, 2002 or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I was given uh, a copy of Resident Evil 4 in a steel book, steel case. Uh, I was really out of the loop in, in that period of my life. Like, I didn't keep up at all with what was going on in the gaming world. I would just sort of go to the game shop every month or so and just buy something that I saw on the shelf that so looked good. It's owned by Macklemore, isn't it? Game shop, game shop, game shop. No, 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 no. Mac, Mac the more. Yeah, sorry. Um, so I unwrapped this thing and saw that Resi Four was apparently out, and I was like, "Oh, wow, this is amazing!" And it was a special case, and I thought, "This looks good." Mm -hmm. And uh, I, uh, I, I remember my my grandma was staying with us for Christmas that uh, that year, mm -hmm. and the following day. I sat down and played it. And she, for some reason, was in my bedroom doing some ironing. I don't know if maybe we were the only two in the house and she thought she'd just keep me company, even though I was fine just playing my game. Yeah. And I just remember the, the one of the first things that happens is that Leon Kennedy goes into this Spanish countryside. Uh, he goes into the house of a scary man who turns out is a bit of a zombie. And then the two people who he arrived with in a car get knocked down into a ravine. And he looks out the window and he goes... You might have to send. Well, you will have to sense this. Shh. Yeah. Oh. Like that, really vehemently. What time is that? That's uh, nine minutes and eight seconds. Nine minutes and eight just, seconds. Um, just make a little note for myself. Like yeah. That. And uh, my grandma's behind me doing the ironing, and she goes, "Oh dear." Like that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, she didn't approve, but uh, yeah, I, I received Resi Four completely unexpectedly, and it's one of my. I think it's one of the best games I've ever played. Of, of all time, so... Firstly, yeah, that would have put you probably at the ripe old age of maybe 11, 12. Yeah. Which is not okay no. to be playing that I found it very game. spooky, but I enjoyed it. Thank you very much. And secondly, how cool is your grandma to hear a swear word and not go, well, no, no, no. We Turn that off, boy. We won't, won't be listening to that. No, I think, she, I think she just knew that I played video games and I watched movies and it's stuff. It's just how that, it be. Yeah. She's I'm, a pretty cool grandma, actually. Yeah? She's the one, I think I might have said on, on a pod it's one, she's the one who, when we were about eight years old, uh, we were driving along. She was, in the, she was driving, it was just me and my cousins and my brother and sister in the car. Mm. And we saw a, a guy snatch a woman's handbag. Oh, yeah. And jump into a getaway car and he sped away. She just chased him at, in like fifth gear for... For a while. That is a Resident Evil 4 permitting grandma right It is, there. yeah. 
hundred percent. Yeah. Well, I don't really have any answers beyond things that I'll talk about in other mm. questions, really, in terms of games that were bought for me that I had no idea about. Yeah. Because I usually just, if there's a game I want, I usually ask for yeah, it. Yeah, me too. Uh, I'm just looking at what year that actually came out, but carry on. Yeah. Well, in fact, actually, while I remember, in case anyone's interested, Resident Evil 4, 5, and 6 for the PS4 are currently 11.99. In a oh, triple they? pack digitally. Yeah, I bought it the other Four, day. Five and six. Okay. Yeah. So I've that's not played five or six. It's worth bearing in mind I if you if you want if you, even if you're just after four. I think they're like fifteen pounds each still. Yeah. So if I mean, it's cheaper and you get three. So th- I don't know how long that's going to last. So but what, if they're you're just interested, upresed for PS4. Yeah. PS4. Mm-hmm. I didn't even necessarily know they were available on PS4. Sounds like someone's no, going to go and buy something when we've finished recording the podcast. Well, like I say, I think Resi 4 is one of the best games I've ever played. Uh, I never played 5. Uh, yeah, 5, even though it looks, you know, it's probably all right. It looks yeah. kind of like 4, but just six set in Africa. Wasn't great. And 6 but wasn't fun in co-op. you enjoyed, yeah, you it's enjoyed. It's fun in co-op, and I imagine 5 is as well. I, just, I was just shocked because I wanted to play through Resi 6 as my next co-op game that I play with my friend over the internet. Right, yeah. And, um... And so we just we both bought it. In fact, I I borrowed the office copy. Right. And potential spoilers for the tat unboxing oh, on yeah. Christmas Day there. <laughs> um, and uh, and he bought his own version for like fifteen pounds physical. And I was we checked it digitally on the store, and it's like sixteen quid or something. And then I was just looking around idly. And yeah, there's this triple pack for eleven ninety nine, cheaper oh, than any of the games individually, and you get all three. That's crazy. So. You I'm buy playing Resi the Resident for 11.99. For well, exactly, and then four, just so. not play five and six. Yeah. It's your prerogative. Give five but a go, maybe. You might as well. Might uh, as well. Anyway, that came was out so in bad. 2005. Apparently, so I was 13. Okay, that's still very young. Yeah, it's pretty young. <laughs> still very game. young. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, this is going completely the opposite end of the spectrum. I asked for one year. I asked for Rune Factory Oceans on PS3. Okay. It came out in 2011. Uh, it's a it's a JRPG. Right. It's not good. Sounds like one. And I really liked. I th- I don't know what it was. I think I just wanted to play a game that was that was like it. I think it had sort of life managementy uh, farming sim elements to it. Mm-hmm. But then it was a JRPG on top of that. And I think I liked the art style. And there was something about it. That I think it was quite cheap as well. And, it, and I was just looking at it, thinking, and you know what? I quite like to play that. But this is, I feel like, post rose-tinted glasses era PS2 where you could buy a game that was objectively not very good and still have a good time. Yeah. Now, you know, you just need to look at the reviews we we go through in Worst Games Ever to see that once you hit PS3, the reviews are pretty much bang on mm. in terms of this game is horrible, 10%. Yeah. Whereas on PS2, it's like, this game is horrible, 60%. Yeah. Uh, so... I should have paid attention to the critical reception. It got a 55 on Metacritic. I played it for about an hour and then never touched it again. But I don't know. It, it suckered me in. That hmm. was the last time I, I asked for a random game for Christmas. Right. And uh, I'm very grateful to have received it. And I think I still have it. Okay. But it's just not very good. Oh. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. That's all, that, that's all I've got to say on Why that. don't we talk about something that presumably is a game that you think is good by talking about something that you made a conscious choice to play this week in a section yeah. that's taken a long time for me to introduce. Oh my god, the, he's getting louder. Called yeah. What We Wait. Play In. They're weird hats. They're difficult to get. Yeah, they just sort of without, fold. <laughs> Why do they fold in the middle like that? It's so bizarre. Oh, oh sorry. Hello, everyone. Oh. Uh, we're just talking about Christmas hats. Welcome back to the show. We hope you enjoyed that one second of pause there. Mm. And now we're back. Hello. This is what we play in. This is a bit where we talk about what we, we play in, peeps. Mm. What we play in. Uh, more like what we stream in, <laughs> mate, because this week and the week before, uh, I streamed a uh, little Inferno. We talked about about on the podcast that a few weeks ago, didn't we? Did we? I think we did, Little Inferno. Me and you have talked about it, because I told you I was going to stream it, but I don't know if it was on... The, it, yeah, I think, I think we did, I think actually. we did, because I, I, I looked it up and looked up the, the yeah, developer, because I, I thought the music was similar. I think we were talking about indie games that, 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 didn't, yeah. that don't get a lot of love or attention, right? Yeah, Underappreciated, because I talked about Oxenfree. Yeah, in any case, yeah. um, I've been planning for probably a month or so uh, to, to stream that in the lead up to Christmas. Because mm-hmm. I think it's got sort of a, not a Christmassy vibe, 
but uh, I don't know, almost like a, a Huga vibe. Are you aware of Huga? Huga? No, I'm not. H-Y-G-G-E. It's a word from one of the Scandinavian countries. Great. I think Denmark or Norway. Okay. Possibly Sweden. Right. But not Finland. But not Finland. Not Finland. We know it's not Finland. No. But it could be the other ones. It could. It's, it's probably going to be Finland now. It's, <laughs> the Finns are furious. They are. As they are prone to be. Yeah. I tell you what, though. Mm -hmm. What One thing you can say is it's got that big Christmas energy. It has. Even if it, it's got that B BCE. Yeah. Before the common era. Yeah, it has. Uh... uh Huga is loosely de de defined by a it's just sort of a sense of coziness and like mm. log fires and sitting inside with lots of candles lit and While no it's cold out no filament bulbs lit yeah and sort of Whoa. cinnamon and wooden furnishings spice and everything nice and sort of things like that yeah power puff girls I probably overly Christmas it I think that you can have it all year round but anyway yeah so Little Inferno is a game where you're essentially just facing a big square recess into a wall, which is your furnace, um, made by the Tomorrow Corporation. Ooh. And the Tomorrow Cor Corporation also send you catalogs um, where you can order things, and then you just put them in the furnace and burn them. Mm -hmm. And they do different exciting things. Sometimes they make, like, colored fire, or oh. sometimes they're, like, mechanical things that switch on when you set them alight. Yeah. Um, you know, all sorts of sorts of fun fun crazy wild zany wild, objects crazy um and uh the game essentially is you just working your way through each catalog just burning things seeing what happens <laughs> um but there is still a challenge element in that you uh have this whole it's completely a sort of secondary objective but you have this whole list of um uh, combinations that you can do. So it'll give you the name of the combo. It's a bit like having a trophy trophy list. Right. And it's like, this is a hidden trophy, but the trophy is called, uh, you know, uh, uh, this is a made up one, but like catnip. And in order to do that, you burn the little cat plushie yeah. and maybe some like chatting, chattering teeth. Oh, that's like clever. Catnip, something like that, you know. Right. Uh, some of them have, you have to burn like three things at once. Um, and there's a lot of objects to go at, and it's actually quite easy to sort of talk yourself into, oh, well, it could be, it could be all five of those things. They're all related to nip or cat. <laughs> so, and you, as long as you burn them at the same time, you can actually get, you know, a combo that only requires two things. As long as that those two things are in this mass of like five or six things that you're burning, so right. that can be quite fun. It's like you hedge your bets and think, could be any of those, so you order them all chuck them in the furnace and set them alight. See what happens. Yeah. Um, we've not got as far as sort of the final act of the game uh, on my streams, but there's this a complete shift in both, well, not really in tone, but in uh, gameplay style okay. uh, right at the end of the game where suddenly it becomes basically an entire different genre. Oh, wow. And it's like, oh, what? Okay. It's a bit like Echo the Dolphin. A little bit, yeah. it sort of comes out of left field a bit. Yeah. I mean, that's more, you know, Echo the Dolphin... The last level still plays the same as all the others, but right. it, yeah, tonally it's different in Echo the Dolphin. Yes. Uh, tonally, I would say it stays the same in Little Inferno in that all the way through Little Inferno, it's this very weird mix of, ah, oh, cozy, happy fire, but also, cozy, happy fire, <laughs> set fire to your cat plushie. Oh, no, no. It's a little bit Little Nightmares. Oh, dear. As well. So, dystopian. Yeah, sort of dystopian and a bit creepy and... Anyway, it's a really nice, bizarre blend of, uh, you know, gameplay styles and and tones and things. So I've really enjoyed it, and I'm gonna Wonderful. I'm gonna finish it in one more stream. Fantastic. At some point, probably in the new year. Yeah, it will yeah. be the new year at this point, won't it? Well, it will be We're taking our break now. I was I did say on my previous stream that I would maybe stream on Friday if everything is done, and I said that's very <laughs> unlikely. But yeah. on the off chance everything is done, and I've got a couple of hours spare on Friday, I'll I'll stream it. But Ooh. I don't think I did. Oh, did you not? Well, I mean... You, you didn't say. No, I did say oh. it, but I mean, this has gone out on, oh, right. on Saturday, yeah, right? Yeah, we're very busy. Yeah. <laughs> we're so busy. And, uh, you know, at time of release, I probably didn't do the stream. Maybe not. Sorry, everyone. Mm. New year, though. Uh, speaking of streams, Peter... Yeah, what have you been playing? I played uh, the When How Do Marcus Saved Mercenary Day. Oh, yes, you did. DLC yeah. from Borderlands 2, the Christmas-themed one. Ah, that's, that's a great one. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. It's weird playing Borderlands 2 after Borderlands 3. Mm. But I was quite fortunate in that uh, 
it was a, a very, very nice, smooth 60 frames per second. Oh, okay. So it was different in a good way. Yeah. Not that Borderlands 3 doesn't run well, but Borderlands 3 doesn't run well. No. So Borderlands 2, it's just, I think it's, I said it on the stream, it's, it's, it's pretty much ageless now. And that its art style is going to allow it to look good well into the future. Yeah. It came out in 2012. And now that it's it's got a home on current gen consoles at 60 frames per second, it, it's kind of like that's the perfect version of this game. Mm-hmm. And it's it's never going to really look or get any better than this. And it's just going to kind of be a bit timeless, which is great. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I defeated the raid boss and okay. uh, Mr. Tinder Snowflake. Right. And then I went and fought him again, and he was more powerful. Mm-hmm. And I died a lot of times, but I did eventually beat him. Merry Merry Christmas. I did it. Well I ki- done. I killed him. Fantastic. He's dead now. Good. But yeah. in my free time at home, where I live, mm. I've been playing The Outer Worlds. Oh, have you? I finally back jumped back now. into it. Because I only played it for like an hour, and then two hours for a stream. Is that all? I thought you played a bit more than that, but no, I guess I, I, I just assumed. Played the first hour or so, and then I played. I streamed it for two hours. Oh, played the first couple of hours again, and uh, and yeah, last week, last weekend, I started. I picked it back up after finishing off Death Stranding, and I tell you what, I don't want to talk too much about Death Stranding. Yeah, but it was so nice to go back to an actual <laughs> video game, like a tra- in a traditional sense. Yeah, I'm getting a lot of ads at the moment for uh, Outer Worlds, and I'm thinking, yeah, looks looks like a lot of fun. It's it's fantastic. Like it's so well written, and mm. I'm really, really enjoying it. I'm painst- It's taking me so long to play it. Yeah. Because I'm talking to everyone and going into every house, and I've got you know you've got your companions, and they'll chime in during quests and like pop in during dialogue and just just snark about something. Mm-hmm. Uh, I j- j- I mean we've spoken about how the outer worlds works before. I think most people have a vague idea. It's from the people who did Fallout New Vegas. Uh, and the original Fallout games, if you want to get serious about this, uh, and so it's it's quite dark in its humour, and that's that's a dystopian future right there, where everything's run by corporations uh, on these sort of outer world planets, yeah, and uh, everyone's sort of indentured servants to them, and if they speak out, they get, you know, they get their pay cut or they don't get medicine and stuff like that. So everyone's just sort of saying, "I'm a spacer's choice man," so is my dad. We've been spaces. D- d- make sure you buy Spacer's Choice. It's it's not the best, but it's it's pretty good. Like they're always just dropping slogans at the end of every other sentence. Right. It's really like. So obviously you're not part of that, mm-hmm. and you're just running around, snarking at everyone. Right. And you can develop a thing called just as an example of how, sort of, twisted in its own special way this game is. Uh, I developed a uh, what's it called. I can't remember the specific name for it, but it's it basically it's a phobia. So depending right. on what you do in the game, it offers you, it said, oh, we've identified a new phobia in you. Would you like to accept it? And it basically, it's con- it's contextual. So I fell off a lot of stuff. Right. And so it said, every time you fall, you, this is a new phobia. And every time you fall, you're going to take like a, a temporary hit to a load of stats, basically. Because mm-hmm, you're sort of scared by it. Now, you don't have to accept that phobia, but if you do... You get a skill point that you can spend. Okay. So it's worth, sometimes it's worth the trade off. Now, stupidly, I accepted the one called Robophobia. So I was scared of robots. Right. And it took me the longest time to realize that one of the companions in my party was a robot. <laughs> and so I was, I permanently ha- then had a debuff oh. whenever this robot came with me. So I then had to basically, it made that robot companion unusable for me. But. It did give me a new dialogue option when I spoke to him, which was to just scream at him. <laughs> Uh, so, <laughs> so you can just scream at your robot companion when you've got this, and th- that's just in there. I love the idea great. that the hero has robophobia, but he, his companion is a robot. He's just constantly or she yep. on on adventures, like, oh, yeah. oh, c- come on, oh, I suppose. Oh. <laughs> and then when you talk to them, you can just literally just yell, ah, oh, god, and it's great. The robot says back to you. Does not compute. I do not understand. Ah! It just screams back at you. <laughs> it's it's phenomenal, and you know there's there's so much world building in there. You'll go to a terminal and read up on a piece of information, and then go back to another character. It's not even part of a quest, and you'll have a new dialogue option mm-hmm. with a couple of extra lines of dialogue. You can complete quests in any number of ways by just shooting or stealing or just using dialogue 
skill checks to get through. It's it's phenomenal. I'm really, really enjoying it. I'm hoping I'm going to get through it before Christmas mm -hmm. because then I want to play Star Wars. Oh, yeah. I'm doing it the other way around in that I've finished Star Wars, but I want to try and play that a little bit over Christmas. Outer Worlds. Outer Worlds, yeah. Yeah, Outer Worlds. It, I'm really, really enjoying it. I think it's fun. It's definitely one of the better games I've played this year. Mm -hmm. And in fact, it's doing pretty well, Peter, in our Game of the Year poll. Well, that's, that's right. partly why I want to get it played, because I wonder whether it might be one of my uh, one you of my wanna, choices. You want to wade in? Yeah. If you are a patron supporter of any tier, there is currently a poll up, and it will be up until midnight on New Year's Eve, where you only have one vote, but you can vote for your favourite game of the year. And the, your favourite games of the year are defined by, I think, the seven or eight top scoring games from the previous post. So these are the games that appeared in the most people's lists. Yes, they've been nominated by you already as a collective. Exactly. Um, um, and you only get one vote, sadly, so make sure you, you choose wisely and let us yeah. know why you chose it in the comments below. And then that's going to decide the top five listener games of the year. The people's choice. The people's choice top five games of the year that will run through along with our own in the new year. I'm the first podcast back. Yeah. That's what I've been playing. Okay. Well, I've got a question here. Have you? It's from uh, Joe Stevens. Three first names. <laughs> Have, really? Well, Stevens is, a, is, is t you know, there's more than one oh, Stevens. Oh, it's plural. There. Yeah, Joe Stevens. Joe Stephens. Yeah. Uh, hi, Ben and Peter. Hello. I'm a massive fan of both you and have watched your videos for both of you. Both of you. There is an of in there. There it is. Uh, hi, Ben and Peter. I'm a massive fan of both of you and have watched your videos for years. And I'm now in a position where I can support you on Patreon, something I wanted to do for ages. Thank you, Joe. Thank you very much, Joe. I was wondering, what was the very first video game related thing you got for Christmas? Personally, mine was an N64, which I still play to this day. Ooh. Keep up the good work, fellas. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Do you want to answer that one first? Because I should, that, you should have read that one, really. Oh, it was okay. your turn. No, it's fine. Yeah. Um, well, mine yeah. was a teal Game Boy Color. Oh, wow. With Pokemon Blue. And they were brand new Oof. in the box, all sealed up and everything. Should have kept them like that. I shouldn't have opened it. I shouldn't now. have touched it. I should have just put it straight in a plastic <laughs> box. Bought a second one. Never touched it again. Yeah, I often think, what if I could time travel mm. back to the 90s and just buy all these sealed copies of yeah. consoles and games? I'd be a rich boy now. Mm. Yeah, no, it was my it was my teal, my sort of blue colored uh, Game Boy Color and a copy of Pokemon Blue. And I played it all Christmas and I got stuck in Viridian Forest, which is not that far from the beginning of the game because I didn't realize that the black void at the top of the forest, you just sort of had to embrace it and walk into it to exit the forest. Right, and you didn't want to even... I couldn't even see it. Like, I couldn't... Everything, every other sort of entrance way that I'd come in and, and, and out of so far had mm. been on a building. So to get into the forest, you go through a building and out the back door, which is clearly a door. And then when you get to the forest, there's just this black void with a couple of tiny sprite arrows on the floor. Right. I didn't put two and two together. So I was wandering around this forest for a long time. Oh. That was basically my whole Christmas. Oh, very Christmas. <laughs> was just wandering around this forest. But I eventually worked it out. But yes, that's the first one, uh, first Christmas thing I got. And it kick-started my well, Game Boy habit. I was just going to say, it clearly made a lasting impression on you, even though you did spend some of your Christmas staring at, well, not even staring at a black void. You thought it was irrelevant. That no, black so void. what's that? There's no forest. Staring at everything else. I've gone through all the forest. But, uh, you know, you like you still like your Pokemons a lot. I do. And your Game Boys. Yeah. So uh, it was worth doing. Yeah, absolutely. Peter, mm -hmm. what was the first gaming thing you got for Christmas? I think, I don't actually remember because I think I was very young at the time because I've got an older brother, so it was probably sort of for him but shared. So mm. I was even maybe younger than the normal entrance age. Right. But I think it was a PlayStation 1 uh, with... It will, It came with Demo 1, one yep. of the many Demo 1s. <laughs> there are various ones. Demo 1. 1, which had demos for, like, Spyro on it, Medieval, Tomb 1, mm -hmm. Gran Turismo. Um, and I think it had a copy of Crash Bandicoot bundled with it the original or maybe the, the book my parents bought it you know a, along with it i don't know if it was bundled right um but i don't actually specifically have a memory of that i don't have an actual image in my head what i do remember though is probably i think it was the same year uh being given a copy of tekken one by i think my aunt okay um 
And the thing that I remember most is how heavy the box was because it's one of those manuals that's oh. like really, really it's thick. It's got 12 European languages in yeah, it. Yeah, like, and and each set... So like the, the, the manual itself uh, has a different page for every character. So it's got character oh, profiles like and then that. you multiply that by 12 or whatever. Right. So it was a really hefty box and I was like, <laughs> wow, this is great. This is an expensive game. And... Uh, I remember playing that quite a lot in, in the very early days of me having a PlayStation. Uh, you know, there was a level in Fiji that had just the best music ever. Oh, awesome. can you recite it now? I see you dancing to it. <laughs> and so on and so forth. Oh, I'm sad you stopped. Yeah, me too. Um, but I, I don't think... I completed it for, or even, or even defeated the final boss, like ever for a, a long time because really? he's very difficult. Hey Hachi in Tekken One, I found near impossible to defeat, even when I was thirteen, fourteen. You know, so oh, no. as a six-year-old, I will have just been sort of probably just played a lot with my siblings in versus mode. Right. Tennis, but uh, you know, but yeah, that's those are my early memories. I had PS One, Crash One, I think. Um, Demo one is a pretty early memory. Yeah, nice. Mm. It's always gaming related, isn't it? Yeah, seemingly. Well, I that was the question, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, no, I can't even remember a, a Christmas memory other than that. Really, that's probably uh, okay. my earliest Christmas memory. Oh, really? Is of is of that? I think. Yeah. Probably. Yeah, it's nice. I might be wrong though. Anyway, mm -hmm. it's a bit weird, wasn't it? It was um, a bit weird. Yeah. Anyway, weird this, thing to say. it's a nice thing that. Uh, that it can't get any weirder. No. Huh? That would be <laughs> that would be strange. That some might weird. say. Yeah. Peter, yeah, it's time for obscure news. This just in. Peter mm -hmm. Austin, yeah, have you got something weird for me? Because I've got something weird for you. It's one of those that you won't be able to use for the video title. Oh well, thank goodness I've got something that's not nasty. I hope you're not being sarcastic. No, no, I'm not. Okay, this is by Luke Plunkett at Kotaku. Okay. Um, Microsoft cancels streamers' partnership after sex offender tweet. Okay. 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 Pretty short write-up, but it's it's all you need to know. Let me just mute this. There we go. Jeez. Are you okay? No. Uh, no. No. No, you're not okay. Getting a lot of buzzes in my hand there. Oh, right. Harrison... Harrison Jr. Patrick Stewart. I think that's his, his username. Harrison Jr. Jur, Jur. Not Patrick Stewart. No. <laughs> He's called Harrison Patrick Stewart, I think. <laughs> that's such a confusing way to write his name out. The first four, four <laughs> words of this article are very confusing. <laughs> so, Harrison, Harrison Jr. Patrick Stewart <sighs> had, until last week, been a verified streamer and partner on Microsoft's Mixer platform. Mm. His deal has since been cancelled after he tweeted an image of himself alongside the text, come watch a registered sex offender plays Fortnite with 10 year olds, two exclamation marks. What? It's not even grammatically correct. So it's because he he posted a selfie and he looks, he's got a sort of, you know, weird moustache oh, and right. shades on. So he thinks he looks like a, like a sex offender. That's a really funny joke. But uh, let me just read that again, verbatim. Yeah. Come watch a registered sex offender plays Fortnite with 10 year olds. Good. As the Hollywood Reporter dot 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 reports, <laughs> that's actually what it says. Great from Luke Plunkett there. As the Hollywood Reporter reports, yep. Stewart, who had who had around eighty thousand followers, posted the following tweet last week before quickly deleting it, and then it's embedded the tweet in there. Yeah. Um, in a statement sent to the Hollywood Reporter, Microsoft say we take immediate action when we determine content violates our terms of service. We encourage our users to report potential violations, and we provide guidance on how to do that. We've reviewed the content in question and as a result made the decision to end our partnership. Stewart's account is no longer verified, nor even apparently active, with all his previous streams deleted and a small message left simply saying, I'm sorry. Really? Is that all it says? Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. Something I missed because there's a massive advert that sort of threw me off. In the middle of the article, it does say he then issued an apology, and there is a larger right. apology here. So he tweeted out, at Mixer Harrison Jr. I suppose he should change his handle now to just at Harrison Jr. Patrick Stewart. Now that yeah, now that he's been dropped. 
I want to apologize for my recent tweet. I absolutely agree that it was inappropriate, and I'm sorry to the people that it upset. I made it without thinking how it would read. I meant it as a joke, but I agree with the fact that it isn't something to be joked about. I'm sorry. Man, it's it's kind of astonishing, really, because if your entire audience... If, if what you play is Fortnite, yeah. which I'm, I'm reading between the lines here, I'm assuming he's a Fortnite streamer. Sounds I don't, like it, I don't yeah. know. That means your audience is predominantly young. Mm. If you if you cannot... I mean, everybody makes mistakes. Yeah. I'm not suggesting that he is an idiot man. No. But that's certainly an extremely foolish mistake to make when it concerns your livelihood. Mm. Yeah. Can you imagine going into work and goose-stepping around? Yeah. It is Peter about, Austin, <laughs> yeah, as I you know. are prone to do. Absolutely. <laughs> no, it is about knowing your, your demographics. Because, like, we, for example, know that most of our audience are sort of 18 to 30-year-olds-ish. Yeah. And um, some awesome people who, who are beyond that as well. Oh, absolutely, yeah. and a, You're the coolest. And a handful of people who we know are younger than that, mm-hmm. who, you know... People let their children watch, or their nephews and nieces. Dainton. At, at, yeah, at Dainton. At their own, very much at their own risk. Yes. But, um, you know, if you know that largely your audience is of a certain age, and of a certain sense of humour as well, then, you know, you have to you have to think about that before you start posting content. And also, you have to think about the fact that, who am I partnered with? Mm-hmm. You know, like, we're not partnered with anyone other no. than sort of cultaholic in, in a way. We're, you know, we're part of that sort of network. But, um, you know, outside of that, we don't have to worry about Upsetting anyone. Uh, upsetting, you know, Gearbox or EA. Talking or... about the wrong kind of brands. Yeah, exactly. You know? um, so, yeah, you just have to not be an idiot and say stuff about being a sex offender when you're actually, like, you know, affiliated with Mixer. you just got a stupid moustache. And streaming to children. Dumb. Yeah, it's really dumb. Silly mistake, that. Mm. Well, are you ready for my weird news, Peter? Yeah. This comes from Polygon. Okay. Modern Warfare charges $20 to show players how many times they've died in a match. What? $20? Yes. A microtransaction. In a a match as well? Yeah. Not even, oh, here's all the deaths you've ever had. That would be a more interesting stat. I can keep a mental note of how many times I die in a match. Sorry, carry on. The subtitle is, a microtransaction watch is basically the only way to find your kill-to-death ratio mid-match. Oh my god. Yeah. One of, Call of Duty, one of Call of Duty Modern Warfare's frequently requested features is a deaths column on the scoreboard for every mode. While it may seem like a trivial addition, it's entirely missing from modes like Team Deathmatch and has been since launch. Wow. However, as part of the recent Mother Russia bundle, players can buy the ability to see their deaths for $20. Unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, The feature comes in the form of an in-game watch called Time to Die. The watch displays the number of kills and deaths you have in-game and is something you can look down at during the course of a normal match. While most of the watches in the game are purely cosmetic, Time to Die, allowing players to view a hidden stat, seems like a possible advantage. Someone who is having a bad round may decide to play more conservatively rather than continue to rush into the action, for example. And I think that's a bit of a... A stretch, really, because knowing your KD is the most COD thing yeah. ever. Yeah. I didn't even realize that you couldn't even see your KD in no. this game. Deaths are a stat that players have been requesting to add to the scoreboard since Modern Warfare was released earlier this year. The key stat is absent from modes like Team Deathmatch, where kills and deaths are the only currency that count toward winning the game. Mm. Stupid. Infinity Ward hasn't stated why the stat isn't present, but it's likely an effort to curb toxicity so players can't be bullied Mm. or feel discouraged for performing poorly. True. This is a strategy that other Activision Blizzard games like Overwatch, which doesn't feature a scoreboard at all, and Heroes of the Storm, which shows specifically tailored stats rather than things like kills and deaths. But while those games have other objectives, the primary focus in Modern Warfare's Team Deathmatch is nothing but scoring more kills than the enemy team, making deaths a critical stat. Yeah. Finally, according to Modern Warfare, to the Modern Warfare in-game store, the Time to Die watch is a limited time item, so it's likely that it will disappear soon. It's unclear if another death displaying watch will come in to replace it, or if the feature will simply disappear from the game once again. That's mad. That's really that is weird news there. It's so, I did, I think the weirder news is that you can't see your your yeah. deaths in Call of Duty. I know that is that's it's a state. They've been showing deaths in first person shooters since you know PS2 Xbox era or earlier. It's a it's a it's just like a, a cornerstone of first person shooters or yeah. just shooters in general. And it's Call of Duty. 
you want to make the Call of Duty community less toxic. Stop making Call of Duty games. Yeah, it's I agree. Not, it's not taking away the death stat isn't going to change anything apart from confuse people. I and even if it is about like you know you don't not wanting uh, players to see who else is dying a lot and having to go at them. Just make it so that you can only see your own yeah. deaths. It should be that you, you don't have to buy a watch. It should be in the game, you know, where you can see how many times you have died on your own screen. You know, if, mm. if you die, maybe it comes up on the screen while you're waiting to respawn or something like, currently, you know, here's your KD spread or, you know, here's, here's how you're doing. You've got this many kills, this many deaths. Yep. You know, I understand maybe wanting to hide that information from asshole players. Uh, but there's no reason you can't show it to yourself. It, you know, they can't be showed, shown to the to the player. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But hey, either. $20. Yep. $20, $20 and you get it. Easy. We're not sure if there's going to be another death count watch <laughs> later added to the game. Yeah. No, I know, I'm I, sure we're not sure of that because there probably will be. Yeah. In fact, I'm fairly sure there will be. Okay. Stupid. Right, let's move on to a question. Let's. This is from Drew Morton. Mm. Simple question. Which video game character would make the best substitute Santa Claus? I think the answer's clear here. Yeah? Yeah. Do you? I do, yeah. Go on then. So, Santa Claus. Uh, big guy. Yeah. Got a beard. Yeah. Likes kids. Yeah. Lives in a sort of the frigid north. Yes. You know, like Kratos. Yes. Big guy. Yeah. Got a beard. Yeah. Likes kids. No. He loves. He really likes kids. <laughs> yeah. He's got one. He's got that one. Means it he doesn't mean he them. likes it. Yeah. It's like, you know, it's like when you've got a wart. You love warts. Anything that you've got, you love. That's that's the rule. I've got joint pain. Yeah. It doesn't mean I love it. Love it. Likes kids. Uh, lives in the, in the frozen north. Right. Has sort of supernatural abilities. Yes. Kratos. Ho, ho, ho. Talk me through... Mary, I'm going to eviscerate you. Talk me through Kratos' Christmas Eve, please. Um, you mean when he's doing doing his work? When he's doing his grim work, yes. Yeah, okay. Um, he Give, Giving gifts to all the children he loves. Yeah. Um, I think... Oh, God, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. No, come on, you can do this. So, uh, he lives in a workshop... Under the sea. ...in uh, sort of Viking country... Yes. Um, not Finland. No, not Finland. One but of one the of the other, other Scandinavian countries. Yeah. yeah. And he's got little elves. I think elves are originally a sort of European-ish uh, yeah. creature. He's got elves who make, make toys. And then they There's say, dwarves in the game. He's got dwarves then. The okay. dwarves make the toys for him. And when it's, when it's time, he hops into a boat. Right. And it gets pulled around the world by... The the snake that encircles the world. The what? The world serpent. The world serpent. What's he called? The um, oh, something I, near. I can't remember. Got 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 Garfield deer. Garfield 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 deer. Because you know how better to get around the entire world? Yeah. Than being pulled along by the serpent that encircles it. By the world snake. The world snake. So uh, you know he sits in his boat. He gets mm -hmm. taken around, and uh, all he does is. Smash it. He doesn't go through, he doesn't go down the chimney. You know, the whole point is Santa, it yeah. doesn't matter if the door's locked, he can go down the chimney. He's a stealth assassin, isn't he? Santa, Santa is, yeah. He's but a stealth archer. When Kratos gets to your front door and realizes it's locked, he just punches the door down. Right. He goes in, he eats all of the cookies and milk. Right. He then goes to the fridge, eats any sort of meat products in there. Yeah. All, all of the eggs. He eats all the raw all eggs. All the eggs, yeah. yeah. Because he's got to get that protein, hasn't he? Yeah. And then uh, he leaves behind uh, the severed head of one of his enemies. Great. Yeah, for everyone. He's got that many. Yeah. He's got enough for one for every child in the world. You're totally right, Peter. Yeah. You are, I, to I see it. I see it. I doubted it originally. Yeah. But have you got any more suggestions? No, it's just Kratos. Just Kratos, because you're, so, you, you're correct. That's yeah. it. You got it right. I have three. Oh, wow. Okay. You ready? Yeah. First one is Sam Porter Bridges. Because it sounds like Santa. No. Sam Porter. Because he, well, kind of. Sam Porter Claus. Yeah. Sam, <laughs> Sam Porter Claus. Sam Porter Claus. <laughs> he delivers things for a living. He does. That's a good point. However, he bloody hates it. Mm. So this is sort of a, this is, this is my hypothesis. And then this is me just sort of debating whether you know like a, a scientific paper yeah where you're not going out there to prove something you're going out there to to see if it's correct 
Yeah. Right. So you're, you, you've got to look at it from both sides. Mm -hmm. So Sam Porter Bridges, he delivers stuff. You can get Father Christmas hat in the game. Oh, can you? It is possible. Okay. Apparently, when I was doing a bit of research on him, uh, he delivers stuff by trade. However, I bet, I don't think, I mean, he does like kids as well, actually, because he's got that little one on his tum tum. Oh, yeah, he has. Yeah. So he's got that, about one. that one. Sort of the integral part of the one of the most yeah, important. I, I just sort of ignored it for the whole game. Yeah. Uh, but however, he falls over a lot. He, yeah. take, he takes ages to get anywhere. His equipment is not good enough to get him across the whole world. And, mm. um, and he doesn't want to be delivering stuff anyway. No. He just falls over all the time and ruins stuff. He's got to fight weird creatures. So I don't think actually, I don't think he is a good one. No, he'd be a good substitute if Santa got, God, imagine if Santa got like food poisoning on the 23rd oh, of no. December. That would be really bad. It's like, uh, sorry guys. It's, it's like the the myth that Mythbusters did about the toilet on a plane. What about you know, it? You know, when it just basically drops off a massive lump of ice. Oh yeah. It, it, look out below is all I can say. Oh God, I don't if Santa's mean- Santa's got the bump piss while he's not what delivering I meant. presents. I meant, imagine if he just got really ill and wasn't able, that was the one day of the year that he oh. wasn't able to work See, on the I think 24th. it'd still, I think it'd still go. Right. But it would just be, look out. Look out for blue ice. Look out below everyone. <laughs> yeah. Because Santa's coming to town. Or brown ice, I think it would be. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, my next suggestion is the Xbox mascot um, and vehicular icon car from forza oh car you know yeah. car from mm. forza yeah. one of one of the xbox mascots car from yeah. forza yeah uh, the forza car that would be good it's fast enough it's really fast it's got plenty of actually it probably doesn't see this is the negative now it doesn't have a lot of boot space because it's got an engine in the back mm. and then it's not got much room in the front and it's only two seater yeah so actually no maybe not might have to get each child a single a single Lego stud. Yes. Each. One of those mini, mini ones from the Wished Hat that we did. Yeah. You very, could, very tiny. You could get ones. maybe like two billion of those in. Or how many How many children? I guess are these sort of, hmm. not necessarily Christian children, but like Christian plus atheist and agnostic. Yeah. How many Western children? Yeah. I guess you? Western really is. Yeah. Did uh, you celebrate... Um, Christian, you have um, Christians in the in the Far East, though, as well. I think you do, but yeah. I suppose Christmas as a commercial thing is spread. They celebrate Christmas in Japan, but it's not a religious thing at all. No, I know. I'm not. My point is like it's not a religious. So you're not just counting the Christians. No, you're no, you're not. Anyone who celebrates who has the the Father Christmas thing going on. For argument's sake, let's just say half the population of the world. Maybe. Yeah, let's just say you need at least three and a half, yeah. four billion studs. Yeah, uh, which coincidentally is is what people say when they go cross-eyed and they look at me and you. Yeah. You go, wow, wow. Look, there's at least three, three to four a, billion three studs half, there. Four billion studs. Oh my God, look at them. M mountains of men. So I don't think that would be appropriate. No. Xbox mascot, fought a car. No. I do have one more. Okay, good. And I think I might have got it with this. Right. Jill Valentine or other from Resident Evil. <gasps> I know why. Because of the teleporting item box. Oh. What, did, what were you going to say? Well, if if Santa Claus gets to the door and it's locked and he, he he's like, do I go down the chimney? No. No. I'm the master of unlocking. Ah, oh, see, that's another element. So definitely Jill Valentine. It's got to be Jill Valentine. It's got to be Jill Valentine. She's even only, named after a holiday, just the she, wrong one. Not only is she the, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Not only is she the master of unlocking, not only is she named after some kind of patron saint of a holiday. Yeah. But... She's also got a teleporting item box. Mm. Anything she puts in one, wherever else she is in the world, if there's another item box, that item will be in there. Dressed in red, I think. So she just has to go to every house and hope there's an item box. In yeah. There. And that's it. So there we go. Kratos and Jill Valentine, I think, could maybe team up. Sitting, maybe driving around in, in Forza. Maybe driving around in Forza car. In car, in car. Sorry. sorry. Xbox's car from Forza. Yeah, I erroneously thought the car was called Forza. No. No, the the the, the, the doctor is called Frankenstein. The monster yes. is called his... Forza. It's called car. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. I hope that helps. I know it doesn't. Mm. Peter, it's time to move on to a huge discussion. Yes, really. it is. What's that? Oh, it's coming. It's, oh, it's oh. a big discussion. I hope my presents are this big this year. It's Whoa! A really big discussion. It's hu I mean, it's not a huge discussion. I mean, we could have talked about the Game Awards, but I thought, let's keep talking about Crimis and Vid Vidya Games. Because hmm. why not? And that honour, Peter, goes to Rexy Adar. It does. Adar. Adar. Uh, Rexy says, hello, boys. Hello. Hope you're doing great. Yeah. 
A lot of games, especially those with live elements, do something special around Christmas, like special events or items or whatever. What's the best one you've seen? And what's the worst? Happy holidays and a happy new, ne- a happy happy new, new, new year, year to new you. Year. Here's to another year of triple jump awesomeness. Thank you, Rexy. Thank you for all your support this year. Thank you, Rexy. Much appreciated. Peter, mm-hmm. how about we go through the best ones? Yeah. I've kind of only got one written down. So, have do I... I don't uh, have any decent it, live ones. Right, I do. I've got. I've thought of one that I just sort of loosely remember being like, oh, well, this is great, but I don't really remember what happened in it, which was um, RuneScape. That's what I've got. Right, okay. So I think they still do... We're talking strictly sort of about live service games, mm. you know, like Destiny and Fortnite and things like that, because they're able to... And MMOs, for example, like RuneScape. Yeah. They can update and just put in Christmas events and then take them away take again. Away. We're not talking about Christmas levels in games. That's, no. That's different. Um, yeah, RuneScape. Yeah. Is there a particular RuneScape one you have? No, I. so I... They've done a few. I just remember... Uh, you know, playing RuneScape back in the sort of the the initial wave of when everyone was first playing it. I just remember yeah. sort of logging on around Christmas time and going, wow, you know, everyone's got Santa hats on. Mm-hmm. I think there were like present objects that you could like give or find or something. It's very sort of hazy in my memory. I guess there was probably snow as well, but I don't even remember that. <laughs> um, I do have one other thing, yeah. which is not Christmassy, but happen happens to happen at Christmas. Okay. Which is that... Battlefront 2 add um, the latest content from the the newest Star Wars <laughs> film. <laughs> okay, which is normally at Christmas time. Yeah, but, uh, sure, that know. works. But if you if you know more about the RuneScape one, you should you should elaborate well, al- better than I can. Allow me to recount my Star Wars knowledge, my my knowledge of the RuneScape event that I'm thinking of, and okay. see if it if it rings any bells for you. Mm. Uh, any you Christmas could, bells? Cr- yeah, exactly. You got a quest from Father Christmas himself. Okay. And I believe it took place mostly in Varrock, mm-hmm. the big city, yeah, uh, where the girls are pretty. Mm. And it's got the spooky druid circle in the south. Oh, yeah. Where they does. shoot spells at you if you get too close. Yeah. You want to go there. And I think you had to you had to paint marionettes. You had to get some kind of baubles. And there were definitely elves involved that you had to do a couple of quests for. Yeah, that I, I think I've done that. And the reward was one of three sets of hat and scarf. Mm-hmm. And the hats were like sort of woolly hats of various different designs. And the scarfs, the three scarfs matched them. And the scarfs went in place of, I think, like where you'd normally wear a necklace. Yeah. Or, or a medallion or whatever. Um, and, and that was the reward. And I remember that one very fondly because my main account, I think, still has that Christmas reward in the bank somewhere. Oh, wow. All those years ago. Yeah, I, rem- I definitely remember doing quests for elves. Now I think about that. Mm-hmm. I don't actually remember the, doing the the stuff for Father Christmas, but I specifically right. do remember the elves. Yeah. So I think it was that one. I did look it up. I can't remember what year it was because I suggested we include it in our Christmas the Christmas themed video game mm. level thing, but it's sort of it's more of a live event, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Because it goes away after Christmas, but you get to keep the rewards. So mm-hmm. that was one yeah. that I really liked. Do you want some bad ones? Yeah. Well, when I say bad, I'm, let me define bad. Right. They're just not, they're sort of low effort, is what I mean. Okay. So, Borderlands 3. Mm-hmm. On the main menu now, it snowfalls, but it doesn't settle on the ground. And in the background, it's still the desert. Right. And there's just sort of snow falling kind of at the front of the screen. And that's it. That's it. Good. I haven't seen anything in game... Yet. At a solid that's, 30 FPS. That's, that's Snowfall. Remotely related to Christmas. I haven't yeah. seen anything about that. Um, <laughs> I'm about to play, at the time of recording, I'll probably, at the time, sorry, of release, uh, or the time you're listening to this, at the very least, I will have played the new DLC that's just come out. Mm. But at the time of recording, it comes out today, so I haven't had a chance. Okay. So maybe there's some more Christmassy themed things that I'll uncover, but currently, at least, not hugely impressed by. Mm. It might as well have not done it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just. It's just snow green screen yeah. in front, uh, over the top of your character stood there on the main menu. So that wasn't great. Another one is Death Stranding. Oh. I don't know if this is Christmas related, but I only started hearing it during December. It might just be purely because it's in the... I only ever heard it admittedly when, it, when I was in the snowy area, like the snowy mountains. 
you hear sleigh bells every so often. Oh. So it'll go ting, 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 ting. Wow. It, it's apparently just a little Easter egg. There's, there's nothing more to it than that. Okay. I don't know if it's because it was in December. I don't know if it's because it was in December and I was in the mountainous area or if it's just because I was in the mountainous area and it's all year round. I would imagine that if it's, you know, a little Santa reference, mm. it's probably the second option there. Right. That it's December and also in the snowy mountains. But I thought that was like... That's a bit, a bit rubbish, isn't it? Well, uh, talking of this is completely unrelated to the question. But, okay. You know, given that I don't really have a very good answer, I'll pad out my time with this. Go on. I saw yesterday on YouTube that there is um, a really, what sounded exciting but turned out to be kind of disappointing Easter egg in uh, Jedi Fallen Order. Oh, okay. Um, where there's this bit very early on in the game where you're walking through a train and just opening some doors as you go into the next carriage. Mm. And on like the second or third door, the button's not working. And uh, what you're supposed to do is press the button and turn around and then the game continues on from that. Yeah. But apparently, apparently it's time to go for a cigarette because everyone's having a little, there they all go. A little creak. Maybe. No, they're stuck again. Okay. Apparently if you attempt to open the door 66 times what okay then you just hear the emperor go execute order 66. oh that's stupid that's, that's, that's just is that real yeah oh I, that's dumb i saw on youtube this video came up in my recommended saying like order 66 easter egg in fallen order i was like oh what's this what's this then pressed it it was like yeah so what you do is you press this door 66 times oh. and he was like i'm gonna speed it up so you guys don't have to watch even sped up it seemed to take forever because it's quite a slow <laughs> animation he sort of goes huh Bloop. Huh. Bloop. God. So it takes it and then he just goes, ex it doesn't even sound, it's not even a very good impression. Execute order 66. Oh, dear. oh, will you just commit to going outside? Jesus. Great, great, great. Okay. I think they, they're, they're sort gone, of going gone back in now. Yeah. <sighs> um, no, because I, I don't really play that many live games, really, or, or games where... Um, you where know, such things could happen. No, yeah, where it's sort of relevant or like fits in. Um, so, uh, yeah, you know, not really. I don't, I don't either. But uh, you know, I remember the RuneScape one fondly, and certainly, mm. you know, Borderlands Three was a, was a bit of a letdown. They could have done all sorts. They went way harder on Halloween than they did at Christmas. Yeah. I know that their first proper story DLC is coming out just before Christmas, but putting in doing that just makes me think why did you why did you do it? Mm. Um, they have admittedly been giving away actually some codes. The the twelve days of mayhem or some borderlands buzzword right. nonsense where they've been giving away on social media shift codes to redeem various skins in game that are festive related but uh, the main menu with the snowfall it's just like it's, it's just falling on desert and of course it's melting how is it even falling in the first place i remember um one christmas i was given a game uh it was a vehicular combat game, mm -hmm. sort of a bit like Twisted Metal or something. Yeah. It was called Motor Mayhem, Whoa. which is a really lame title, but it was set in this sort of futuristic dystopian world where it was like a, a combat sport that people from all across the galaxy were watching on telly. So not Twisted Metal, then? No, not Twisted Metal. But it, I really enjoyed it, actually. It's like, like that, but not, but but not, not that. that. But that. But that, but just not that. But just not that. Um, so it's, it was an underrated thing. I felt sorry for the fact that it didn't do very well because there was some interesting world building. Yeah. Um, got it on Christmas Day. When I plugged it in, uh, uh, I put it in and, and launched it, um, I chose this one character who's this like giant rock man mm -hmm. who almost sits on this comically small cart because he's so big. Right. It's not supposed to be funny, but he's like enormous. Okay. Um, and he's meant to be a bit sort of big and scary. And when I got into the arena, he had a Santa hat on Oh, and I just thought, oh, that's how he looks. Is that how he looks? Why, why does he wear like a weird Santa hat? But it was one of those where, because this is PS2. This was the day before. You could actually get online with a PS2, but most people didn't. No. Um, but it, it just used the in-game clock, uh, the the console clock. Of course. So I guess for a sort of a week around Christmas, it would uh, do things like that. And I like that. I'm fairly yeah. sure Harvest Moon does stuff like that and mm -hmm. things. You know, it's 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 always fun. I do like Christmas events. Um, Lego Loco used to do that. You were of Lego. Did, Loco. No, I've never heard of Lego Loco. It's a PC game. It was a sort of like having a Lego train set. It's like a top-down world builder, but sort That's of cool. Almost sort of 2D. It wasn't I like that. Uh, it wasn't isometric or anything, and. Uh, around Christmas everything would get snowy and I think mm -hmm. there were like 
you would unlock new um, objects that you can place down that you could then have forever. Like once right. you played the game through one Christmas, you had them forever. You had all like those items. Presents and Christmas trees and stuff, yeah. Nice. Yeah. I think the Division 2's got some crazy snowball gun and stuff currently. Oh, so yeah. it's all fun. I think it's all fun. Even if it's quote unquote bad, mm. I think it's still fun. You know, it, I'm still not sure about Borderlands 3, but there we yeah. go. Um, something might happen to people playing it on Christmas Day. Same, honestly, same with Death Stranding. Mm -hmm. Kojima puts weird things in his game games that nobody thinks about you know metal gear solid has tons of easter eggs that use the in-game clock mm. uh the internal clock sorry on the on the ps2 for example with uh what's his name who's the old guy the sorrow which old uh, guy the sadness the 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 mgs3 i'm talking about oh i don't know sniper boy anyway yeah you, die hard man if you fast forward like a week uh, if you change your internal clock or if you just wait a week, he dies and the boss fight's over. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, it's great. Like, it's really clever. So I may well end up eating my festive hat. What, just of old age? He yeah. just dies? Because he's really old. God. And then he starts the battle by saying, give me the strength to take this one last foe. Right. And if you just wait a week, he dies <laughs> because he's old. I like that. Yeah, That's it's good. it's very clever. Um, and I'm sure there's, there may well be something in Death Stranding as well. But I just thought the sleigh bells are just a bit... Okay, really? But there we go. I'm sure you will let us know Here about all Jill the things Valentine we can... and Kratos in <laughs> car. <laughs> uh, I'm sure you'll let us know in the comments about all the things we've left out and some of the more mm. underwhelming things as well, what we didn't talk about. Yeah. Peter, mm -hmm. if people want to do that and get in touch and tell us about things, where can they go and how can they do so? Well, if you can hear me, yeah, over the sound of everyone else in this building, yeah, you can uh, you can uh, chat to us in the comment sections and chats on YouTube and Twitch. That's YouTube.com and Twitch.tv forward slash Team Triple Jump. Yep. You can contact us on social media, Twitter.com and Facebook.com forward slash Team Triple Jump. Jump. Talking of the chats on uh, when we stream on YouTube and Twitch. I want to thank Lord Brotovich and Cecil Prumps, by the way, for uh, yeah, we do. all the modding they've done this year. Thank you so much. And likewise, uh, Luke Alden, who's been taking care of the Facebook for the latter half of this year. Yeah. Doing a very good job of it. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got a Patreon where you can ask questions for this podcast and get all kinds of other rewards. That's patreon.com forward slash team triple jump. If you're watching the video version of this podcast. Uh, you can get an audio version at play.acast.com forward slash s forward slash triple jump. We've got a website, that's triplejur.mup. There's a store there and other things too. And the Discord is bit.ly forward slash team triple jump. And thank you to the mods there as well for all their work this year. That's Jack, Joe, and Crimson Dragonfly. Fantastic. Thank you, guys. If you'd like to follow us on Instagram, you can at that Peter Austin and at Ben Potter 20. On Twitter, at that Peter Austin and at confused underscore. Dude, we're taking a couple of weeks off now, but usually you can expect a couple of lists from us every week, Tuesday and Thursday. Streams every Monday, Tuesday and Thursday. Th 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 Monday and Tuesday being on Twitch, Twitch. I mean the solo streams. And Thursday being on YouTube mm. for the joint stream, Blaze It. Worst games, Peter. Yeah. Worst games. Worst, Worst games, games ever. Fortnightly. Friday for patrons of a certain tier. Sunday for everybody else. It is not a worst games ever week, but... Next week will be. Mm. Speaking of which, actually, we do the podcast every Saturday, but we do shows pretty much every other week or thereabouts. Leave us a review on iTunes, etc. It helps to do with algorithms. Now, these shows, we've still got stuff going out over the Christmas break. Yeah, we have. We've got an episode of Main Menu that's, I think it's actually just gone out. That went out, out on Friday. Yeah, I think it did, yeah. So please watch that. It's festive themed. It's good. Worst Games Ever is going out uh, Is going out at the end of the Christmas week. Mm -hmm. So just after Christmas, you'll get a Worst Games episode. Rules Boss. There's an episode of that going out at the beginning of January. Exciting. We've got the the Worst Games Ever Christmas Triple Jump Appeal Tat Unboxing yes. going out on Christmas Day. We have the biggest list we have ever done going out on New Year's Day. Mm. Please, please, please watch that. It, an unbelievable, unbelievable amount of effort's gone into it from several people. And, uh, and you know, we'd, we'd very much like you to watch it and share it around. And if you're hungover on New Year's Day, you're welcome. Mm. There's something for you to watch that's going to take a while. And there'll still be a, a, a light scatter, a light dusting, uh, like snow, 
of uh, other lists sort of throughout the the break. Um, yes. Sometimes it might only be one per week. Sometimes it's two per week. Uh, but there'll be enough to keep you keep your ticking over. Keep your ticking over. No streams that. though. No streams. We're actually back. We should be back on the sixth of January, Monday mm. the sixth of January. So commencing that week, streams and podcasts will resume. And the first podcast back, as we said earlier on, will be our Game of the Year 2019 mm. show. So if you're a patron or if you want to join Patreon, maybe you get a little bit of that Christmas money and you think, hey, you know what? I can afford to chuck a dollar into the hat and then even if it's just for one month, you can then go and vote in this uh, in this poll. And ask a question too. And ask a question. Well, I mean, if, if, you're still, if you're still a patron, we're not going to be asking for podcast we won't be, questions we know, for we'll that actually, show. We'll have a lot of Game of the Year stuff to talk about, so we won't actually... That'll just be that, a Game of the year, year show. But if you want to keep your thing rolling over for, for future podcast posts, you'll be able to ask questions as well. But the Game of the Year poll post will be open until midnight on New Year's Eve, so make sure you go in there and cast your vote wisely. Yeah. Peter, mm. there's just enough time yeah. to talk about our sponsor once more. There is. Ho, ho, ho. Let's all go down to Chris Redfield, where you can celebrate Chris uh, by harvesting from the field a white material that gets plant blood all over it and goes red. Merryfestives.com <sighs> forward slash Christmasings. Christmasings. Any mm. apostrophes in there? Uh, yeah, just before the S. Which is a plural. Which one? Uh, the one at the end. Okay. Christmasing, apostrophe S, yes, because it's the plural of Christmasing. Christmasings. Because uh, that's how you pluralize, isn't it? You stick yeah, an yeah, apostrophe yeah. S on the end. I think you put a semicolon in there as well, yeah, just, yeah. For, just for good measure. Thank you all so much for your support this year, especially with the podcast. And uh, we'll be back in a couple of weeks' time. Have a wonderful and safe Christmas and New Year. Enjoy yourselves. Eat too much. Eat too much. Kiss uh, your grandma. Kiss your grandma if you can. Mm. If you can catch her, she's quick. She is. Um, Mine's chasing muggers. I'm sorry? Mine's chasing muggers. Muggers, yes. Muggers. I thought suddenly, I thought, is that some kind of derogatory term? No, it just is. It's someone who mugs. Someone who mugs. Uh, and uh, and make sure you spend time with family if you can. If you don't celebrate Christmas, enjoy the, the time off that I hope you have or enjoy the 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 hopefully the goodwill yeah. that people tend to exhibit around this time of the year and just just have a nice time playing video games do that's, what, that's all we can hope for tell tell people that you love them tell people that you love them yeah it's an important time of year okay everybody take care of yourselves we'll see you in 2020 bye, bye.